Hello, this is David Harper of Monarch Turtle. Yesterday I illustrated the mechanics of a plain vanilla interest rate swap. Today I'd like to review the valuation of a plain vanilla interest rate swap following the procedure given by the always excellent John Hall. First, let's note in the case of an interest rate swap, at the time the counterparties enter into the contractual agreement to swap, the value to both counterparties of that swap is very nearly zero or zero. It's only over time that the counterparties expect the value of the swap to deviate from zero, primarily because one of the counterparties is going to be paying a floating rate to the other. Perhaps it's tied to LIBOR, in which case, although the counterparties do know the first floating rate payment, they're not going to know the subsequent floating rate payments. LIBOR can move up or down and that will accrue to the benefit of one counterparty and the cost of another counterparty. So primarily we're interested in the value of this swap subsequent to inception. And if we look at it from the perspective of one of the counterparties here who is the floating rate payer, let's assume they will pay six month LIBOR rate every six months. In exchange for that they will receive eight percent per annum again paid every six months. So for this counterparty this graphic sort of depicts their experience. They're going to be receiving four percent of the notional every six months and they're going to be paying the floating rate. But recall one thing about this interest rate swap is when we get to this point here and pay the floating rate it's not the six month LIBOR at this point in time it's the six month LIBOR rate that prevailed six months prior here so this is really an interest payment in arrears okay so one the first key to valuing the swap is to break it into two bonds this counterparty is effectively receiving coupons on a fixed rate bond so we just compute the price of that bond and then we subtract the other bond effectively which they are paying as they are effectively paying coupons on a floating rate bond so it's cost benefit we take the benefit of the bond received effectively and subtract the cost of the bond effectively paid and so we're generally going to be valuing this at some time in between settlements remember these are six month intervals the timing here is significant. Let's just assume to keep it simple we're going to value the swap at the midpoint here between swap settlements. So that means if we're at the midpoint both counterparties have three months until there's going to be an exchange or a net settlement of the swap payments. If we're here with three months to go then we're going to be valuing this series of fixed cash flows as a bond and subtracting this series of cash flows as a bond that starts in three months. Here's the other tricky part about valuing this interest rate swap because this part will be easy it's just pricing a bond. Here we've got floating coupons. The tricky thing and the nice thing is that we don't need to really do all of these cash flows. In three months this bond is going to pay that effectively a floating rate coupon and then the idea is that the price of that bond must be equal to its par at the instant it pays that coupon. That's also true here. Why is that? Because what we have then is a bond that pays coupons that fluctuate in this case with LIBOR the same rate we're going to use for the discount rate. So the key idea here with valuing this bond is that we only need to treat this first cash flow and that is it's a cash flow in two parts it's the floating rate coupon plus a fairly priced bond at par so that'll make this easier as I come down to the example and here I'm going to assume a notional of 100 million and that the pay fixed is going to pay 8% on the notional every six months. I've got an assumption here about the LIBOR curve. I just made these up such that the three month LIBOR is 5%, the six month LIBOR is 5.5% and, and so on. These go in a straight line. So these numbers simply reflect this hypothetical, perhaps a little bit steep and unrealistic LIBOR curve. 
I'm also going to assume unrealistically that that LIBOR curve doesn't shift over time. So here we've got the valuation of this plain vanilla interest rate swap under assumptions. To keep it simple, I'm going to assume it expires in 15 months. In other words, we said the first cash flow will be swapped in three months. So that's 0.25 of a year, a quarter of a year. So that's the first swap settlement. And then another six months or nine months out. And then finally, just to keep it short, I'm going to assume the swap expires at 15 months out. So we've got three points in time to consider. Here's the LIBOR rates. I made those up. Discount factors simply give us a number that we can multiply a future value by to get the present value. And so what we have here are we're pricing a bond and we're pricing another bond. For the fixed coupon bond, what do we have in three months? Well, we've got a coupon here of four million because this fixed receiver is getting is already guaranteed for the tenor of the swap to get eight percent of the notional or eight million, but the half of that every six months. So they're looking at four million in three months, four million in nine months, and finally four million in 15 months and then we're also going to include the notional or in this case as we treat this like a bond this is the par of so we've got four for the coupon plus 100 for the par that's the future series of cash flows we want the present value of that so we just multiply those by the discount factor with so that's four times the discount factor is the present value. I don't need to do that. I don't need to use the discount factors. I could just take the four million coupon and discount it with the exponential function by multiplying by exponential function minus the LIBOR rate multiplied by the time gives me the present value. So for this bond, I'm present valuing the three cash flows. I sum them and that gets me the price of this segment of the swap, the segment that we're receiving, and it's the price of a bond with fixed coupons. Now this counterparty's paying on the floating, and remember the key is we only need to treat a single cash flow. In this case, 102.75, that's because the cash flow includes first that floating rate coupon that we're going to get, which is based on six month LIBOR, five and a half percent, but again, only half of that, six month or semi annual payments. So that's 2.75 million. And we add, remember the key part to this, we get to add the notional of 100 million to this right here because at that point in time, what we have is a fairly priced bond. So in three months, the future value of this floating rate bond is the coupon plus the notional or 102.75. Similarly, we can do a present value on that by taking that future value, multiplying by the exponential function of negative the rate, multiplied by the number of years, in this case 0.25, gives us the present value. And we're done with pricing that floating rate obligation by treating it as a floating rate bond. Carry that down here. So the value of the swap to this counterparty is benefit minus cost. The price of the fixed rate bond, 103, 103 million and change minus the present value of the floating rate bond, 101.47, gives us a difference of in present value terms 1.59 million, that's the value of the swap under these assumptions. This is David Harper, The Bonic Turtle. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for your time.